Hello and welcome viewers, you're watching our brand new show, In-Depth, with your host, Kriti Mishra. A platform where we break the most complex issues of the world in just five simple questions and their five simple answers and help you understand how these issues matter to you. If you're watching this video on an online platform, you're consuming data. It was in 2006 when British mathematician Clive Humbley said that data is the new oil. Tired of hearing that? So am I. And why shouldn't we be? After all, we are in 2022, where data is no longer the new oil. It is the world's most valuable resource. So what is data and why is everyone talking about data colonization? First, there was military colonization, then energy colonization. Colonizing a country no longer requires its physical invasion with military strength, but can simply be done by controlling activities through networks and databases with just a single click. Now there looms the phenomena of data colonization. Data is a collection of facts such as numbers, words, measurements, observations, or just descriptions of things. Our lives today are as much about our physical being as they are about our data. The only difference is that while we are conscious of our physical lives, we are seldom aware of how our data is being used by its custodians, which may not necessarily be a government, but could very well be a multinational company based in a different country. But why do companies process our data? And what does your single click mean for these multinational giants? What do companies know about us? How are they using that information? Are they selling our data? So when you order a pizza online or listen to your favorite song on YouTube, you get other suggestions based on your preference. Well, putting data together and processing them results in information, knowledge and wisdom that can be used to take more informed decisions by these companies. Let's take the example of Facebook. Although it is not a country, the American company holds data, including personal and private information of more than 270 million Indians. Yes, you heard that, 270 million. In this sense, India could very well be a colony of the popular social networking site, which not only holds our personal information, but also tracks our daily routine, habits and behavior, also communication. The networking companies are influencing individual choices when it comes to what product they are buying or which party they'll vote for. Remember Cambridge Analytica? The company closed operations in 2018 in the course of the data scandal, where they were accused of manipulating elections in several countries. It's just not Facebook, Amazon, Google, Uber, Apple, Microsoft, some of the top tech companies that we rely the most on. They are also the companies that rely the most on artificial intelligence to make sense of the data that we send them knowingly or even unknowingly. So how big is this data? Let's analyze its enormity. Until the turn of the 21st century, data used to be in megabytes or MB or gigabytes or GB. Now with the advent of the digital era, this data is measured in zettabytes or ZB, equivalent to 1 trillion gigabytes. I'll wait for a moment before my next sentence and let you count those zeros on your screen. Well, let me make things easy for you. Those are 21 zeros. In 2020, 64.2 zettabytes of data was created. That is 314% increase from 2015. And storage of such large-scale data is one of the biggest challenges. For many companies, storing data on-premises has become a thing of the past. Cloud technologies make it easy to securely store data in the cloud without the need of physical storage. Cloud storage is a way for businesses and consumers to save data securely online that can be accessed anytime from any location. The concept of storage of data through the cloud has given rise to the concept of cross-border storage in data centers located beyond our geographical boundaries and out of our legal jurisdictions. Two countries stand out as the front runners in harnessing the value of data, the US and China. Both these countries have 50% of world's hyperscale data centers, highest rates of 5G adoption in the world, 94% of all funding of AI startups, 90% of market capitalization of world's largest digital platforms. So it does not come as a surprise that five of the top 10 companies in the world in terms of market share are US tech joints. Further, all these companies are investing heavily in artificial intelligence, internet of things and cloud computing. From your cars to your weighing machines to mobile phones to your wristwatches, 
almost every tech enabled device or gadget we use is collecting massive amounts of data. So what about global data governance and where does India stand? Well, global data governance is at the crossroads, intensely contested by nations and industry players seeking to shape rules of the road to benefit their strategic interests. Governments in various parts of the world are already fighting battles with tech giants for fear of losing sovereignty over their people or jeopardizing their security. On the other hand, many countries are pitching the free flow of data. One of the most important recent developments was at 2019 G20 summit, where Japan's Shinzo Abe presented the idea to have a multilateral broad framework for sharing of data. It is worth analyzing India's response to it. The agreement was called the Osaka Track. The idea is that member countries should be able to share and store data across borders without having to worry about security risks. The agreement has many notable signatories, such as the US, EU and China. It is India's response that is interesting as India refused to join the Osaka track as it wants a level playing field in digital economy, meaning allowing opportunity to local companies to grow and to compete at global level before allowing free data flow. With active internet subscribers of 834.29 million and with a projected 1 billion smartphone users by 2026, India has placed itself at the heart of the battle, its foreign policy vision fueled by the principle of data sovereignty, a broad notion that supports the assertion of sovereign writ over data generated by citizens within a country's physical boundaries. Government is also working on a data protection law that will require the data centers of even companies abroad to be physically located within India, apart from saving a copy of that data within the geographical boundaries of India. So what about data privacy? Well, the rapid expansion of data has led to an increase in malware attacks compromising security. Personal data can be misused in a number of ways. Criminals can use personal data to defraud or harass users. Entities may sell personal data to advertisers or other outside parties without users' consent, which can result in users receiving unwanted marketing or advertising. When a person's activities are tracked and monitored, this may restrict their ability to express themselves freely. The global data regulation landscape has become increasingly complex in recent years, and businesses trading internationally must keep track of an ever-changing patchwork of rules. The reality is that data is priceless, and companies have more than enough of that data about each one of us. From our cars and weighing machines to mobile phones and wristwatches, almost every tech-enabled device or gadget we use is collecting massive amounts of data. Every single time we open, use an app, or log in on a website, or even buy something from an online store. It is all creating data. It may not matter to me or to you right now, but all that data makes sense to those who are capturing it. I'll leave you with that thought and sign off for now. Goodbye.